obviously use email, send out an email specific to your tweet up, inviting people to join. And then you can also use Eventbrite or meetup.com to list this and then it'll send out and people can RSVP straight from these services. So you can gauge how many people are gonna be there if you're gonna have food or drinks. Obviously collect business cards so you can keep talking to these people. Name badges is a really big piece too that a lot of people at tweetups miss. I have obviously been to a lot of tweetups and um, it's just a networking event so make sure you have name badges. So that is a tweet up. Host a tweet up. Has anybody ever been to a tweet up in the room? Oh gosh, we I wish we should have created an America's Mart tweet up next next year summer. Um, okay, number four, localized targeting. Again, a lot of you need people in your town and your city to come into the door. So my three suggestions for this: Twello.com, the yellow pages of Twitter using the Facebook search bar, and I'll show you how to do this, and then Facebook ads. Anybody using Facebook advertising? A couple of people, okay, good. That is one of the best ways to be using paid advertising through social media because it's so targeted. So here's Twello.com. When you're here, you're gonna to wanna to click on Twello Hood, and it's gonna show you a map, and you can start filtering down. So since we're here in Atlanta, I did Georgia, and you can filter down and you'll see that there's over 88,000 people in Atlanta on Twitter. All I have to do is then click on Atlanta and I am shown 88,000 Twitter profiles of people I can start following, put them into a list and start reaching out to them individually, following their conversations, responding of what they're saying, retweeting what they're posting, and building that relationship with people who are in my city. Some of the small, small towns might not be listed, or you might only find a couple of people, so maybe try to look a little bit further because some of those people that might be in your town have registered themselves in a bigger city near it. So that's just a, a tip there. And then when you're on Facebook, it, I am from Loveland, Colorado, so I put in Loveland, and you can see, I just wanted to point out that even people are just talking about curbside composting. So think to yourself how you can add value to your community by saying some things that you take part in in your life, in your personal life, that some of your people might be interested in knowing. So again, it's not all about selling, it's not all about your store, it's about the community. So how can you add value that way? And I also wanna point out, when you are searching on Facebook for those keywords that we, we saw a little bit ago, or location, um, after you search, always click post by everybody because that will show what people are talking about who you aren't connected to also. So that way you can find new people because that's the whole goal, right, is to make new connections. And then like I said, Facebook advertising. So if you go to facebook.com slash ads and click on create an ad, you're taken to this form where you can be as targeted as you want with age, um, with their likes and interests. Facebook.com slash ads. And you can fill, you essentially start with millions of people. Now, obviously your perfect client, there, there's probably not millions of them. So you wanna be very targeted because you are paying for this advertising. So in here, this case, again, I use Loveland. You can see that there's over 48,000 people in Loveland that are age 18 or higher that I can market to for my store. Um, I can even get more focused with that of, I could put in moms, um, parenting, uh, a, a more specific age versus 18. I can even put in pages that they may like. Yes. It's all in that form once you select create an ad from facebook.com slash ads. This is just one piece of the location piece, yeah. But it's all on the same page. You just go through, fill out the form. Um, Facebook is extremely user friendly too. They have a question mark by every single field. So if you don't understand what it's asking of you um, or what you should do, just click that button and it'll help you. Next is something that probably seems obvious, but hardly anyone does, and that's to announce your network and invite people to join. If they don't know that you necessarily have a page um, or a Twitter account. So of course, use Facebook to promote your Twitter account. Use Twitter to promote Facebook. If you're on LinkedIn or YouTube, use all of those. Send an email out um, through Traffic Builder. We even have customized Facebook 
emails saying, we're now on Facebook, come join us. But make sure that you're sending out something to your database because they might prefer to hear from you that way. And you're also able to talk to them daily on Twitter and Facebook. If I get a daily email from you, I am unsubscribing faster than I do anything in my life because that will be so annoying. So, but we expect it on Twitter and Facebook. So make sure you get them signed up. Also, be in your store and look, okay, do I have anything out front when my doors are closed that says that I'm on Facebook and Twitter? Do I have anything at the cash register when people are checking out? What about when they leave my store? Do they know that they can find me online? Is there anything printed on my receipt? Is it on my business cards? Do you have a website? Do you have logos and links to those networks? Um, in your email signature line, it needs to be everywhere. We're now in a time where this is the way to market and we're looking for these logos. We want to know if you're on there. We want to know if we can get exclusive deals. We want to know if we can learn more about you. Make it as easy as possible for your customers to find you online. Here's an example of an email I sent out. Um, you can do something very generic of just join us. I chose to be a little more personal and tell people what they're going to find there. Social media tips, email marketing tips, retail industry info. Um, so that way it kind of that way they don't feel like, well, I'm just going to like your page and you're just going to sell to me all day long. I hardly ever put anything about Snap Retail up there. It's more tips to help retailers understand how to use these outlets. Next is customer service. Yes? That was um, my picture on behalf of Snap Retail. I'm setting them to our Snap Retail page, but since I'm primarily, primarily the one posting, um, I want them to get to know me on a personal level too. So again, social media is all about authenticity. So I was talking to someone, um, to Sandy, where are you Sandy? Okay, and, um, and he will, he's working with someone deciding should he have someone manage his account or should he do it himself? And I get this question all the time. Social media allows people to get to know you, the business owner, allows to get to know what your store personality is like. It's all about authenticity and that's what sells. Again, it's all about relationships. So if you're having someone else do this for you daily, unless they know you well or in the store, it's kind of hard to, to channel that through to all of your networks. So um, I like to put my face on things. You know, it's about all about the relationships. So great question. So social media, everything's in real time. People can post something right now. And if you're on these networks and you're not checking them daily, then uh, you could be doing yourself a disservice. And if you're not searching for your own store name to make sure that you're answering things that people might put out there or um, if they had a complaint or something terrible happened, God forbid, but you want to be able to make sure that you're on top of those comments. Quickly responding. Uh, you might also see questions that you can answer, whether it's about the community or a product line um, or something personal that you are very familiar with. Again, building relationships, being a resource. Um, Facebook questions is about to roll out. Uh, not everybody has access to answer questions, but this will be a great place for you to be an expert in whatever you are an expert in. Um, and then again, filtering Twitter and Facebook conversations like I showed you before and looking for those, um, your brand name or maybe some vendor lines that you carry. Also, I know a lot of retailers are probably managing themselves or a smaller crew, so this won't be too hard, but you just have to make it clear of who's answering what and when. Um, it's very easy. Social media is an afterthought. And you're, always, you're in running your store, and you're ordering, and you're stocking, and you're doing everything. But you have to make sure that you are checking these accounts and have someone assigned to these accounts. Don't make it an afterthought anymore. Put that on the, on the everyday to-do list. Here's an example of the Facebook questions homepage, and this is where you kind of live and get quality answers for being an expert. You can also find, you'll be so surprised what you can find yourself in there. Um, the whole controversy of Google versus Facebook, and people are searching for questions now on Facebook versus Google and getting faster responses, so it's pretty, pretty awesome. My seventh tip, exclusive deals. Who has put a deal out to their Facebook page only. A couple people. Okay. 
it's so important. Why do I want to join your page? You know, um, you're going to give me valuable content. Yes, I'll join. I get exclusive deals that nobody else has access to. Yes, I'll join. You have to make it enticing and also make it fun. Um, it's a great engagement strategy to do these contests on your page. So. Oh, also very important is to have a coupon code so you can track your efforts. Um, if you're giving away one specific product, that's one way to track it. But if you're doing a general sale, 10% off this month, um, it's good to see what outlets worked best for that sale. So if you're promoting it on Facebook, I would give a specific code. Same for Twitter. And then in your print advertising. So you all have these different codes so you can see what was more effective, what costed you the most money. Um, again, exclusive, uh, making it exclusive just to the Facebook or Twitter network. You want to make them feel really special. That's what they're, they want. Um, you can also do something where you can get a special discount if you like our page or if you follow our um, Twitter account. And then I'll show you an example of that real quick. But Dell is known. They give only, they have very specific discounted items for their Twitter network only. And they are giving codes out every single day. And here's an example. And that's why they're getting $6.5 billion from, or no, I think it's million, $6.5 million. That, that would be nice for them um, from Twitter. And an example, 1-800-Flowers. This page, you default to their welcome page if you don't already like their page. Once you like it, then you see this, your special 20% off discount, and they have the Facebook 20 code. So that's a great example um, of them using that. In my other seminar, I teach you how to make these customized tabs, so you'll have to come to that.